Russian billionaire Mikhail Prokhorov made his fortune by turning a rundown mining company into one of the world's premier operations. Now he is hoping to do something similar with his NBA team, the Brooklyn Nets. We sat down with Prokhorov at the Barclays Center just before the team's home opener to talk about basketball and his political future in Russia. Here's your team playing the NBA champions two years in a row. Three years after purchasing the New Jersey Nets, the worst franchise in the NBA, Russian billionaire Mikhail Prokhorov likes what he sees from his new Brooklyn Nets. What's your dream, that you can do this in five years, an NBA championship? Just uh, when I came here, I promised to be a champion within five years. I have two years left. So that's why I think we're on the right way. Uh, first, you need to invest some money to develop your franchise. Going all the way this year. Your money well invested. If money can buy a championship, the towering six foot eight, 48 year old is well on his way. With new blockbuster hires like Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett, the Nets payroll is over $100 million, a league high. That includes the controversial new hire of rookie head coach Jason Kidd. This is Kidd's first coaching job. He was playing basketball just a few months ago. And I know that all the players, they respect him a lot. Respect him. They respect him, and he's a real leader. I think uh, Jason Kidd, his boss. Yes, exactly. For sure. But despite the glamour of owning a professional basketball team and the thrills of being an adventure-seeking billionaire, Prokhorov said he is completely devoted to politics. You think of yourself as a politician now. So I'm only on, on politics now. Is that right? Yeah. That's all you care about, politics? Uh, like from time to time, of course, uh, I keep an eye what is going yeah. in economy, what is going in my group, but uh, my day-to-day -day routine is politics. In 2012, Prokhorov ran for president of Russia. To no one's surprise, he lost to strongman Vladimir Putin. Give me your smartest assessment of Vladimir Putin. What makes him tick? Who is he? We all know he's a former KGB agent. I think uh, my personal uh, feeling that he's the strongest politician guy on the earth, on the planet for the time being. Should the United States trust him? Uh, the problem between two countries yeah. is that we have no economic relation. And when you have only politics, it's very vulnerable. And just uh, what we need now on the first stage is to have a very good cultural relation. That's why I'm here, a culture unite uh, nations. Prokhorov recently formed his own political party. As a businessman who made his fortune from the collapse of the Soviet Union, he believes Russia needs evolution, not revolution. I want to see Russia open, Western-minded. It's only maximum 20 percent of, uh, of the world votes for the time being. But in the nearest future, new generation is coming, and my goal to address them, my ideas. So it's a long-term project. But your ideas are what? Have more entrepreneurship? Economy. Yeah. More market economy? Market economy? No monopolies, a lot of competition. Political freedom? And to be a part of a European Union. So Russia, in your mind, is European? Yeah, sure. Can you do it? Whew, I hope so. But I think it will take minimum 10, maybe 15 years. One clear sign he differs from Russia's current political leadership is his take on Edward Snowden. Would you have given asylum to Edward Snowden? I think for me it's a great testimony that relations between two countries are very far from being adequate. 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 Because majority of Russian, uh, they uh, we really think that he was a traitor, and if uh, and he the majority of Russians, in your judgment, think that Edward Snowden was a traitor. Was a traitor, and because we have a very special history, Russian history, and we have we have a very strong belief about loyalty. If you are working in organization, especially in the CIA, then you don't go out and spill all the secrets. So you would not have granted him asylum? I think yes. My position, never. <laughs> For now, the Russian oligarch knows his political goals are a long shot. How long do you think Putin will stay in power? Uh, he is the most popular politician in Russia by far. His basketball team looks more poised for a championship, a feat the consummate bachelor has a lot riding on. You have said that if you don't win a championship in five years, you will punish yourself and get married. It was a joke.
<laughs> so you're backing away from that? But no, just for the time being, I am not looking for the wife. <laughs> but the wife is looking for you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> There's also this. If you're going to run for president of almost any country, you can't be a bachelor. You know, you have to have a wife and children. And you have to be like most people. You know, we live in the global world. And uh, it's, it's completely different. Maybe I'll be the first bachelor in the world. <laughs> that was tongue-in-cheek, obviously. But, yes. uh, and he said the right thing. You don't necessarily have to be anything. No, yeah. no. You can be a global bachelor. What's that yeah. like being there? At, uh... Uh, well, there, it was fascinating because we're sitting in his box, the presidential box, and, and it's up above the, you know, the court. All these Russians are talking in Russian. And you're looking around and you're thinking, mm -hmm. what, a, what a kind of smart scene. Here I am watching an NBA team and the talking within my earshot is Russian.